And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. My name is Janina Crispin. I'm the head of career development at Macaulay Honors College. We have students from all the campus represented today. And so thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand over the mic to Emily Chu. Thank you so much um, for presenting with us today. Hi, everyone. Again, yes, thank you for coming and um, you know spending your time learning potentially about a program that can help you. I have here our current uh, CUNY Tech Prep fellow on, um, on our call today, and he's going to share a little bit about his perspective later. His name is Liron Farin, and he currently attends CSI. I'll let him introduce himself in a little bit. Um, in any case, thank you. So today uh, we're doing an overview about our program and why you might be interested in participating. So for today's agenda, we're going to do an intro and then you're going to have a Q&A opportunity with Liron. Um, I think it's really um, important to hear from the students so you can understand what it's like to actually uh, participate and be part of the program. Um, my name is Emily Chu. I'm career coach manager um, at CUNY Tech Prep. I work with students on their professional development and you'll hear more about the other things we do. Um, so here's some background, which is that we're entering into our eighth year. We have about seven years of students who have participated, gone through our program, and um, we've served over 800 CUNY students. And we're really excited to be talking to Macaulay Honor students today about uh, participating. So we were launched with insight from New York City tech companies and support from the New York City Tech Talent Pipeline which was an initiative from the mayor or the former mayor, I should say. And uh, where our goal is to support the growth of the tech sector and help New Yorkers, um, you know, win jobs that they're excited about in the tech industry. So let's see. In terms of an overview of our program, we're a year-long industry-informed training program, and that blends technical coursework with individualized technical and professional development coaching. So I am a career coach, and I, and I work with students on that professional development side, as well as students going to a weekly class um, where you learn either data science or web development. So really the goal of our program is to bridge the knowledge gap between your studies at your school for your degree and industry best practices that you would need to have under your belt in order to secure an internship or full-time job. Our goal is to help students become competitive candidates when applying to these tech roles. So that involves technical interviewing um, projects and you know, how do you conduct yourself in your job search? So really our goal as a workforce development program is to help you find and secure a full-time job or internship. Are there any questions so far? This is as interactive as you want. If you have any questions, if you came in here, who's heard of CUNY Tech Prep before signing up for this info session? If you could either um, add an emoji or use the chat, let me know. So based off of what I'm seeing, no one heard of CUNY Tech Prep before they signed up for this info session. Yeah, and if you have any questions, please use the chat like on, um, like in class. So Fatima's heard about it before. Okay, great. Um, did you hear about it from a classmate, a club, from one of your friends? Okay, is your friend in it? Yes, okay. Well, then there you go. In addition to talking to Liron, I hope you talk to your friend about their experience. Um, let's keep going. So in regards to who is eligible, so can any major join this program? That, yes, great question. So basically, you need to be a computer science or related major. So what are some of your majors right now? You're in this uh, call right now. What's your current major? What degree are you pursuing right now? Mathematics, okay. Computer science, okay. Computer science. So I definitely have had applied math majors. I've had um, electrical engineering students, CSI students, um, computer information systems, computer science. Okay, so, um, so obviously with the Macaulay Honors, you're not from one school specifically, but I'll just tell you some, um, who here goes to, 
I mean, there's only 11 colleges, so I guess I'll say them, especially since the majority of, of you are computer science students. Oh, so Anzu, you're a finance student. So if you go to CCNY, if you've taken data structures, you will have met the requirement in three. You need to complete data structures in order to be part of our program, because that is the course that will best make you prepared for our program. We we want you to be able to secure a job and data structures is a necessary part of the technical interviewing process. So for you to best benefit from everything that we offer, you need to have taken a data structures course. So minor is informational technology. So Anzu, um, where do you go? What if we are currently taking it? Anna, then you're in a great position. You're currently taking it. You're applying for next fall which is the application is open now, you would submit a um, transcript that says you're taking the class now and you would send an updated one after you've completed the course that um, implies that you would then pass. So Queens College, you need to have taken 313 data structures. Um, CSI, you need to have taken 326 data structures. So Baruch College, um, this is a little bit unique with Baruch we typically ask that Baruch students, I'm take, I'm bringing it up now and pasting it for you on Zoom. Let's see, where is it? Here, okay. So on Zoom, so, okay, so thanks for that, Liron. He was taking um, data structures when he applied for the program, okay. So on Zoom, this is for you. Any Baruch students, these are your requirements, okay? So if you don't have these courses because you're a finance major, we also accept students if they've studied data structures on their own. If you've done a Udemy course, if you have self-studied in some way and can demonstrate that, then we also accept those students because we're not gonna penalize you just because you're not a computer science student. So Samantha, I see that you're a statistics and quantitative modeling student. Um, you could still be eligible based off of what other courses you've taken, um, as long as you are demonstrating some level of data structures knowledge. Same thing for you, Yusuf, as a math, math major. Okay, so to keep talking about these requirements or the eligibility piece, you need to still be in school when you are participating in the program. So your graduation date must start either from fall 2022 to summer 2024. Um, Java and HTML, Hafifa are not data structures, but they are programming languages. And if you've studied programming languages, that is a stepping stone to um, obviously a tech career, but um, data structures is a particular technical, technical concepts about, I think, how to organize data. So yeah, Hafifa, um, message me what school you go to, okay? Um, so you need to be a computer science or related major. So like I said, we accept math, statistics, um, you know, finance, if you have another other background to support your candidacy. Um, and you must be 18 years or older, your personal income must not be above 50,000. And you must be legally able to work in the US. That means you need to um, have um, an SSN, a social security number. We've had international students participate in our program. And the other caveat is you must not have participated in a tech talent pipeline residency. Um, and that's a special program at your school unless you go to Meg or Evers. Um, so my sister is from your college, which class should she take? So your sister can part, can, she can be in CUNY Tech Prep if she's taken this course on Zoom. Um, but obviously if she's uh, early in her career, she might not be at that stage of taking the course. So Hafifa, being a Queensboro Community College student, you need to have taken a data structures course there. We accept community college students so long as they've taken a data structures course at their institution. Valerie, you go to Hunter College. Um, Hunter College has a CS program and I believe the name of the class is software design and analysis too. Yep. 
do we need to have taken all four to, you listed to qualify? Samantha, you don't need to have taken all of them because you might not have been that major. You might not have needed to take the course. You will, you will, there are other places on the application to demonstrate, um, to demonstrate knowledge necessary to be part of the program. We ask you about it. Like if you're interested in data science, for example, we ask you about classes you've taken and we take that into consideration because we understand that if you're not a computer science major directly, you are unable to, or probably will not have taken some of the required courses for your institution. We are we work with students as much as possible. We, tr we want to be flexible and that's all dependent on how much you um, tell on the application. If you have any particular questions in general, I have an email address toward the end of the slides that you can take down and email me about or you can email recruiting at CUNY Tech Prep. Um, for Hunter College, do I need to have completed both these courses? You need to have just for Hunter, you only need to have taken um, software design and analysis too. We don't have a GPA requirement, Ash Ashwan. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm so glad for all of these questions. If you have any more, please keep using the chat, but you only need to have taken um, the software design and analysis too at Hunter College. I know this is not super easy to follow. Um, it's hard when there's uh, a lot of schools on the call like it is with, um, Macaulay. So Ivan, if you're taking it right now, you can still apply like, like Liron shared, he was taking the required course at CSI when he applied. You will then submit a, a transcript later on if we need to confirm that you've passed the course. That's what we need, that you've passed this coursework to participate in the program. Okay, I'm gonna move on for right now. Are there any questions before I move on? Okay. Um, Alexander, you have one. Yes. I'm a new transfer at Hunter College. Okay. Alexander, I'll get to your question. Uh, Biotech data structures at City Tech. Alexander, you would still qualify. You would still be eligible to apply to the program if you've taken data structures at City Tech. You would just need to indicate that on the application, which opens tomorrow. I'm a computer science minor and economics major at City College. Yes, Sarah, you you fit it completely. Uh, we accept computer science minors. Yes, you've taken data structures. You're you're good to go, Sarah. Personal income. It means your income. You as a person. So Anna, you would be able to, as long as your personal income, what you as a person make, um, doesn't exceed 50,000. Okay, so in terms of what we offer, I'm so excited for these questions. Um, we run from July, 2022 to June, 2023. That's the year that we're talking about and accepting applications for starting tomorrow. We have weekly sections in the fall and spring semester where you attend a weekly technical class and classes, um, are about two and a half hours long. There you are gonna be working and developing a project to add to your resume to implement the skills that you're learning in class. Uh, you have access to one-on-one -on -one meetings with career coaches like myself, as well as access to mock technical interviews and mock behavioral interviews. Um, and we also have guest lectures, including uh, workshops like alumni panels, recruitment office hours, et cetera. So we also share um, information about opportunities through our business development manager who works with employers directly. That last, um, that last line is a typo. So a lot of students have shared about the benefit of engaging with students from all 11 senior colleges. I'm sure that as a Macaulay Honor student, you've seen some interesting uh, interactions from working with your peers in your cohort from different schools, you learn from each other. So that's a similar situation with CUNY Tech Prep. Um, in terms of a class breakdown, this in the fall semester is really the meat and potatoes of our technical curriculum where you are learning that data science or web development curriculum for the first time, and then are presenting your project at our December demo night. We require um, two meetings in the fall with your career coach to work on your professional development. We focus on the resume and behavioral interviewing, and you will have the opportunity for um, one mock technical interview 
at least in the fall, as well as monthly workshops and programming from industry partners. Ashwan, I really hope you're, I'm saying your name right, but you definitely can get the slides um, afterward. I will share them with, um, I, I, I'm, I'm saying her name wrong, but I will share them with Jaheen uh, uh, after the presentation. And then in the spring, we're going to have a technical workshop curriculum where you're going to talk about things like system design questions, which you'll, you'll encounter in a technical interview, as well as tackle topics like web security. Uh, we require one meeting in the spring with your career coach, um, but you're not limited to one meeting and continually uh, the, the opportunity for technical interviews. Okay. So in terms of the weekly section, there are about four to six sections offered each semester and they you have to attend once a week. That's the ask. This is just like another class almost that you would take at your CUNY campus. Um, our lab instructors are full-time software engineers or data engineers, they work in the field. So that's the piece of where you're learning from industry professionals about um, how to actually use the technologies that you're hoping to utilize in a workplace. Um, they, the sections follow a small lecture in lab format. So class is two and a half hours long. The first half is usually a lecture from the instructors, either a career coach on professional development or on a technical topic. And then the second half is a lab portion where you get to work on a project that's mentored by the instructors or the TAs who are also um, full-time professionals. Any questions about the structure of class? So you can hear it's once a week, two and a half hours. This year it's been virtual. And as of right now, most, most of it will be virtual as well. Um, not, I can't confirm with you every single detail about virtual versus online, but it's con currently still scheduled to be online next year for the most part. Any questions about class before I move on to the next slide? Okay. Okay, so here we have the two technical tracks and the different topics that you'll cover within them. So with full stack web development, you have the front end, the back end, testing, deployment, these kind of topics. I don't have a technical background, so I can't speak very much to this, but the topics are here and you will get to see, um, I, and I'll show you the technologies in a second. And then in data science, you'll be learning Python. You'll be talking about data collection and processing, statistical modeling. You'll get these slides to review later, but you're covering a lot of topics that I'm sure you've heard about that you wanna dive into more, right? Like in data science, there's machine learning techniques, big data, um, data visualization, et cetera. So this next slide, I'm gonna keep up. And I'm gonna ask Liron, can you introduce yourself? I'm gonna let leave this slide up and then let Liron start talking to you all about his experience with CUNY Tech Prep. So Liron, could you um, introduce yourself and talk about what your experience has been like so far um, with the program and what you've learned, why you would, why you participate in the program? Hey guys, uh, my name's Liron. I am a current senior at College of Staten Island and uh, what got me into CTP was really just trying to get a lot more knowledge in terms of like how the back end works, um, how to integrate that with the front end. Um, so this was like my real first chance of like building my own server using Postgres, uh, JavaScript, um, learning different technologies like Postgres SQL, getting more hands on experience with uh, React. Um, for me, it was also really good to have uh, the mock technical interviews um, that really, you know, it got my jitters out of the way in terms of like different interviews. Um, having Emily, she is my career coach. She helped me a lot in terms of um, my resume, um, all that type of stuff with the behavioral interview um, instructors that actually have like a real background in terms of like um, actual software development, um, networking with all these different people in, into the program really comes into play. Um, for me, um, I actually had a pretty good um, rapport with my instructor, and this can happen with you guys as well if you guys actually decide to actively network, but you can get um, internships like I did through um, connections that you make in the 
in the program. Um, my instructor, he actually gave me a personal recommendation for, um, for an internship and I actually ended up landing it. Um, so that's definitely, it's doable for you guys. You guys just have to, you know, keep going. You guys are here for, there's around 21 people here. Um, you guys definitely are motivated just by being here and you guys can do it. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. And just to kind of give Leron his kudos, the, his um, instructor giving him that recommendation, that's not part of the program. That's Leron coming to class, doing the work, learning, being engaging, interactive, networking with the people around him, taking advantage of the opportunities around him, like someone who works in industry. And that happened organically, right? This wasn't like a formal arrangement from our program to Leron. This just happened because this was more... Um, chances to speak with somebody um, who could teach him something for industry and was like, okay, we, we, he does really good work and we'd love for you to start interning with us. So um, the floor is really open for you to ask Leron. I encourage you to unmute yourself to ask him directly. If you don't have any questions, I'm sure I could come up with some to ask Leron, but um, I please welcome you to ask him, unmute yourself, use the chat. Don't be shy, guys. You can ask me. Uh, Stephanie asked, what was your biggest challenge in the program? Um, for me, it was probably, um, so I'm very interested in the back end, and it was my first time really um, working with a SQL database. So probably working with that, but your instructor will be there for you if you have questions on all that type of stuff. So it's, you'll end up picking up on it, no problem. Um, and then from there, really knowing your data structures and like getting past like hackering problems, you will need that. So you guys should be working on, on that. Even, even like starting now, you, you guys should probably be working on that. Yeah. So, um, the data structure is really important for interviewing, which is why Leron's saying that. And it's like in tandem to learning this web development in the curriculum. And that's why we're trying to hit multiple pieces for what it would mean to successfully secure a role. Um, so Sarah McCoy asked, how was it balancing school in this program? So I was actually, I started the program during quarantine. So like all of my stuff was online. Um, so it wasn't too difficult, but also like it, it really comes down to like how many classes you're taking, if you guys are working, how many hours you guys have dedicated to everywhere else. Um, so if you're dedicated, then you'll you'll be able to figure it out. You kind of just, just have to manage your time very well. Um, yeah, there, it, it kind of just comes up to to the person, how they how they manage their time. I agree with Liron. It is highly dependent on your time management. And we are going to be mostly virtual as of right now. A, 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 we used to have weekly class in person. And we don't do that anymore because of uh, COVID. And um, that's not changing dramatically for the for next a year. Um, Ashwan asked the most important topics. Maybe you can um, elaborate, Ashwan. Um, I'm going to go to Noelle for right now. Noelle asked, how did you decide between full stack and data science? For me, it, it's the math, the math part, um, the data science part. I mean, it's interesting to me, but um, for me, I just, I, I really like dealing with like the back end for web development. So for me, full stack, definitely. Um, that's why I chose it. But if you're more of like a math person, you really want to learn math, data science might be the better option for you learning about um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all that type of stuff. So if it's for Fatima's question, um, this is more like a programming thing. So you do get a say, you get a, you get to be like, I only want to be in this course, or I want to be in that one, or I'm open to both. But at the end of the day, honestly, what it comes down to is availability. If you have class um, during web development, uh, and, you know, this is for CUNY, and then you're only available on days when data science is happening, maybe you're going to be in data science then. We can't promise one track to any student just because of scheduling, right? So that's what I would say to you, Fatima, about um, you get to pick, 
But if you're not available for when our courses are, when web development is happening, for when data science is happening, then you don't really get a choice because you need to go to your classes. Um, no, well, yeah, we do work with students who are full time employees, but you need to be enrolled in CUNY in your bachelor program. You need to be enrolled in a bachelor's program at CUNY, even if you are working full time. You also cannot be making more than $50,000 if you're a full time employee somewhere, Noel. Um, Ashwan, did you want to uh, elaborate on your question about most important topics? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, like what I meant was like, you know how we have, how you said that data structures was like something that we needed to learn, uh, something, that's what I mean, you know, like, like algorithms and other things like that. I don't know if that makes it clearer. Um, so data structures is an essential part to interviewing for a software engineering role, for some sort of role in the tech industry as an engineer, as a data engineer, as a data analyst. These topics can oftentimes be very important. That's why we talk about it because they are going to test you. If you've never heard of HackerRank, get familiar with HackerRank, Leak Code. These are co these are platforms where you can receive coding challenges in the interview process. And so we know how essential it is for these companies to um, in asking these questions. That's why we're emphasizing it so that you can understand how you need to be studying and spending your time. Um, Yusuf asked, do you need to be a full-time student? No, you just simply need to be enrolled at CUNY in a bachelor program. You need to be working toward a bachelor's degree at CUNY. Um, how many students get accepted on us? So we anticipate about 190 students for next year for C8. And so we are accepting, I think, around that many. And hopefully um, you are one of those students. Do you recommend doing the program while you're also enrolled in an internship since this program starts in the summer? So Stephanie, if you are interning this in the summer, you will get exempt from different things because the internship and school comes before CUNY Tech Prep. If you're interning, if you're working, if you um, have class, those things come before CUNY Tech Prep because those are your responsibilities and we understand that. Are there pre-required knowledge? Brianna, can you, um, can you elaborate what you mean by pre-required knowledge? Where can you apply? No, Noel, I'm gonna send a link. I'm gonna show you a link in a, in a couple of minutes. Brianna, can you um, elaborate? That's the interest form that Liron shared. Thank you. You can um, sign up uh, later. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brianna. Yes, by my by my question, I wanted to know like if we don't have no previous knowledge in data science or anything, is that okay to enroll still? Yes and no, because I do think that there are some level having some level of math background or some past experience with data is helpful. Do you need to know that data science best practices? Of course not. We're, like you're in this program to learn those, but you do need to have some, like you need to, I think you need to be good at math is kind of what I'm saying. And you need to have, uh, you know, some aptitude for working with data and what that entails. Um, we do have, um, Brianna, if you tell me what school you go to, I can look at what the requirements are for data science. I go to York. You go to York? Okay. So uh, help in terms there, of there, software engineering are part, not data requirements science. requirements for the web app development too? Like Sorry, either or. or. No, let, let her finish. That's okay. So, um, oh, uh, yes, I just wanted to ask if there is also requirements for the web app development. So if you want to be in data science, we do, we do look for calculus two from your college, math 122. That's what we okay. look for. Um, okay. That's the bare minimum for your college with uh, data science. In regards to web development, um, you are not promised a spot in data science or web development. If you're joining this, this program and you're not open to, and you only want to do one and you don't want to do the other, you don't always get that option because of when class is and when your schedule looks like. So that's why the requirement is data structures. We know that's required in order to successfully interview for a job in the tech industry. Okay, thank you. 
Are there um so are there other questions from Liron? I don't want um I want to like let him uh like you know spend the rest of his night the way he wants to and then if he want if any of y'all have any questions for him before he signs off um I want to give you the chance to ask about his experience. Like some of you asked about how he managed, some of you asked about why he picked web development. Um, are you guys interested in his project? Like what he what he made? Do you you all want to hear about that? To give you guys a little bit more information of like stuff that you should probably know before web development is try to handle arrays, try to handle strings. Like um, when we were saying like hacker rank problems, try the easy try like the easy ones like don't just go directly to medium um because some of them i can't even really figure out sometimes they're difficult so trying to figure out how to ma manipulate data with javascript um you can use python but we in software development it's usually pretty much javascript so if you can figure out those easier problems and you shouldn't really have an issue getting into the program so yeah, we have um we're jumping ahead a little bit, but yeah, we have um we have an application that's a Google form, and then we have a hacker rank, which um was just sent in the chat so you can get comfortable with the platform. We ask you, you know, easier questions, not hot medium ones. They get ranked in that kind of way. So like Leron's giving you that advice, get comfortable with um applying arrays and strings that's his advice that's his perspective about how to approach these problems right so that's those are two types of data structures i don't have a technical background but i do know that those are two types of data structures right there like he's talking about arrays and strings and um liron if you want to end uh your portion here with sharing a little bit about the project that you worked on this fall yeah of course so um, I ended up making, uh, an e-commerce website. So my grandfather, um, was, uh, an artist and I, a lot of his stuff was getting stolen pretty much, um, which happens a lot in the art industry. So I built an e-commerce website with hopes in the future to implement NFTs with that. Um, and then I was with two other individuals that helped me, um, build it. I did the back end completely by myself. And then I had help on the front end. Um, and yeah, we made it, we did it with React, obviously, and we made it developed for um, iPhones first. If you guys want to see, I can show you guys, or I can actually give you guys the link for it if you guys wanted to check it out. Yeah, why don't you send the link, Liron, so they can click on it and navigate um on their own but i'm really glad that you have a deployed website so this is something for all even if you've graduated and you can't participate in the program um what leon's talking about right now is kind of like really helpful for yourself which is have projects on your resume that showcase skills that recruiters are looking for right so you can click on that app later and you probably have to type it into your um, browser but you know one bullet point really easy for leon is deployed uh, application on Heroku, right? And then it's optimized for mobile. So, so that, so he can even write like, um, a deployed mobile application on Heroku and he can hyperlink that on his resume that, and then imagine a recruiter being able to click that and navigate through for themselves. So it adds another piece to their resume that showcases a skill that he offers. He has experience deploying an application. He has experience building a backend from beginning to end. Um, best experience to use it for on your cell phone. So um, that's probably uh, in that on that in that note. Then uh, it's probably good that we're not sharing the screen. Anna's saying that that she likes it. Okay, there you go. So this is an example of a project that you could be creating for yourself, and it can be a really robust project for your resume. Um, any last questions before we let Liron, um, you know, end his night here? Okay, so um, yeah, ha like you see in front of you, you hear Liron talking about like using React. Um, he he talked about SQL uh, earlier. So he talked about deploying on Heroku. So here is um, just the technologies that you'll learn from both tracks. Um, I don't have much more to say other than these are very popular uh, in-demand technologies. Uh, 
Uh, oh, Stephanie has one last question. Do you also utilize whiteboarding when you had to debug your programs? Uh, not whiteboarding. Um, so it depends like what you're, what you're really testing at that time. So like, usually, you know, like pretty much where it might be. And then let's say you're having, uh, you guys might not know all this, but right now, but let's say you're testing a fetch call from your API, then you might have um, like a console.log to see maybe if it even got to that point. And if you didn't get to that point, then you know the errors before that and you kind of know where to look. And then obviously you guys will know your code base. Um, so that will help you. So, but that's also like, that's not like real debugging. Um, but you, you guys will, will get better with that as you, as you go by into your career. I'm still using console.logs, but it's really frowned upon. <laughs> Let's just say that. So at the very least, Leron is learning where he needs to improve. He understands what people use professionally, and he's going to be able to be like, okay, so I need to make progress toward working toward Y when I'm currently doing X, right? So I think that's also a really important part to your own individual journey as you grow technically. Um, so thank you so much to Liron for sharing his perspective. I'm so glad that he could share his project with you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your time, Liron. Thank you for having me, guys. Good luck um, and just do your best. Um, Stephanie, in regard to your question about whiteboarding, whiteboarding is a term usually used about interviewing. So they call it whiteboarding because you're at a whiteboard and you're being given a question and you have to answer it. So that's typically when you whiteboard, okay? Um, okay, let's keep going. So professional development. So um, we just spent a lot of time talking about the technical piece. The other piece to this is obviously your professional development in your job search, right? So each student gets a dedicated career coach where you get to meet with them one-on-one -on -one, and they touch on a lot of different topics such as looking for opportunities, networking, and actually applying, okay? Um, they're there to work with you where you are. Some students are... Uh, applying a lot already and some students need more help with what that looks like and we we work with you at wherever you are so that you can best grow okay um when do you see your career coach at a minimum you are going to see them three times a year um, but you can definitely see them more than the required amount based off of your interest or need availability etc um, we work with you typically in the virtual setting on Google Meet, Zoom, et cetera. We uh, communicate primarily on Slack because that's, um, that's where our communication lives is on a Slack workspace. So we'll get you signed up there. So this is just a brief um, kind of like snippet of where students are working now. As you can see, some were, some very recognizable companies like Google, Spotify, Capital One, um, smaller ones like CS for All, Analect, Dot Dash. I could a new art. There are so many companies that you might not have heard of, but this is a small kind of snippet of what our alumni pool where they currently work. Um, and you heard earlier me talk about um, connection to um, full-time jobs and internships. We have a business development manager whose job is to connect um, students with internships and full-time employment. So we're actively working with companies to talk to them about um, recruiting from our population of students for you to learn more about what it means to be a compelling candidate. Uh, they also set up guest workshops and industry panels so that you can learn more about, uh, you know, your desired job field. So um, the, uh, you're going to get these um, slides at the end of this workshop. I'll be sharing them via email with um, your career development at Macaulay. So then you can take a look at this in more depth later as well. Um, so a couple of y'all had these questions. So our release date for the application is tomorrow. You can apply at this link. Let me get this here. Actually, I can't, I can't. Uh, it's at, it's bit, if you put this in, this will open tomorrow. 
this will open tomorrow. If you open this now, it will say that we're not accepting applications. We're opening tomorrow. If you sign uh, into our, let's see, if you sign into this tiny URL here, you will get an email from us tomorrow reminding you to sign up for the application um, or to sign or to complete the application. So our online application opens February 18th. You will need your a resume and you will need an unofficial transcript from your institution. Um, and then you will be asked to answer um, a couple of short answer questions. We do pay attention to how much you write. We don't want you could write one sentence and that doesn't really tell us as much about why you're interested. This is this can be a very competitive program to get into with the number of candidates we have and we would love to understand why you're interested in participating. Is there an application deadline? That's a really good question, China. So it is rolling. The earlier you apply, the sooner you will move on to the second phase. It's a rolling application. So we are sending out hacker rank challenges, which is the second phase of our um, interview in March and April, where you will then complete a coding challenge. Um, and then if you pass the hacker rank, you will then get a final candidate interview, which will be virtual, and that will take place in April. You'll get an opportunity to actually, um, you know, complete a technical interview with one of our interviewers. So with hacker rank, I will say a lot of students can get intimidated by the hacker rank. I really encourage you to try your best because our instructors spend a lot of time looking through literally every submission. I promise you they look through every submission because they understand that HackerRank will maybe grade things one way, but they will start to see like this student was thinking this way. I can understand their thought process. They're approaching this appropriately. So regardless of whatever your hacker rank says, um, we have some tips that we will share out as well about the hacker rank. Um, I encourage you to try your best and not get too bogged down on a number. We really are here to meet students where they are and help them improve their interview practices. Um, so again, we're a three-step or three-stage interview process online application on a Google form. It's pretty long. I encourage you to sit aside maybe like an hour at most from beginning to end, filling it out, composing all of your short answer responses, submitting it. And then the hacker rank you'll get um, via email if you move on to that, as well as the uh, final candidate interview, which will start in April. All this will be virtual. Um, I think that there is an evaluation form in the chat so that you can share with them what you thought of this event. And I'm open to any questions now about the application process. Um, who's, who's interested in applying? If you can raise your hand or add an emoji or something like that. Who's, uh, okay, so Anna's interested. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I really look forward to reading your application to, um, seeing you know what motivates you why you want to join i'm glad so are there any questions about the program about applying you know i'm here in front of you now um if you wanted to ask any lingering questions you might have i'm very glad to see that you're all are interested um once you sign the interest form you'll, you'll get the link in the email no christopher once you sign up we have your email and we plan on emailing everyone on our interest form the link tomorrow what makes a strong resume that's a really good question that um based, the long story short is if you don't have prior technical interview experience you want to have projects on your resume. That could mean class projects, that could mean personal projects, and you really want to be specific about the skills you utilize. A resume should start with a verb, developed, collaborated, deployed. Um, what are other words uh, that you could use? Um, researched, all of those start, all your bullet points should start with verbs because you want them to know what actions, what skills you offer. 
And that's what you should be thinking about, even if it's not a technical experience or if it's not a technical project, if you work part-time somewhere, if you um, have volunteered somewhere, when you're writing those bullet points on your resume, you want to start with a verb so they can understand what behavior, what actions do you offer into a workplace? When do you find out if you get accepted? So typically we have, everyone should get their final decision um, by, the end of the spring semester so that's about like you know end of may you should get a decision a final decision but we try our best to communicate with you throughout the process about where you are um so stephanie i i know that i asked for hands earlier stephanie do you have a question or do you, were you just raising your hand to show that you're you're interested in applying okay um ashwan do you have another question or what, what about you, Fatima? Okay. Okay, thanks y'all. Um, so uh, Sarah asked, what does a typical schedule look like? Um, Noel, so yeah, that's a good question. So classes are off, most of most classes are actually in the evening. Usually this year it's been about 6.30 to 9 p.m. because we're trying to work with, you know, CUNY classes and not, um, you know, um, block any times that you're in class we do have we usually have about one afternoon class that's about um i believe 3 30 to 6 on fridays that can change year to year but that's what the case was this year okay so typically it's in the evening and then there we have one afternoon class um any other questions about the application or about our program And I think the Ash one, the one who asked about what makes a good strong resume, I really encourage you to talk to your career development center, either at Macaulay Honors or at your individual institution, if you want some more support about a strong resume, because we encourage you to take advantage of the resources around you so that you can, you know, best set yourself up for where you want to be post grad. Okay. So general information, um, so you can, if you have general questions, you can email recruiting at cunytechprep.org. That's our LinkedIn information. You can follow us on Twitter, social media, um, Instagram. Um, my name is Emily Chu. You can email me directly, emily at cunytechprep.org. If you have any questions or if you wanted to follow up about after this info session, okay? So I will be, and I think this was our, this was our, uh our ambassador who spoke to you earlier Liron he's graduated in the fall he has a spring he's currently doing a spring internship and that's going to be great on his resume especially as he keeps um when he's applying for full-time jobs and so that's really it for me I'm here for a next couple of minutes if, if you have any questions please fill out um you know the event evaluation and as well the uh interest form in the chat if you'd like to receive the application tomorrow i'm sorry about the lighting the sun went down and so i'm in darkness So if there aren't any more questions, um, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes, but you're free to sign off. Please fill out those two forms, the event evaluation, as well as the interest form that's in the chat. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your night. If you have any questions, I'm around for the next couple of minutes. Um, otherwise, uh, enjoy your night. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Emily, for sticking around for questions and, and also for holding this information session with us. I look forward to reading your applications, y'all. <laughs>